bless you all. And now at this time, we're going to turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, the 14th chapter. We're going to be reading Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verses 12 through 16. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verses 12. But 
He loveth him that followeth after righteousness. God loves the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, amen, that's going in the right direction. Amen, that's doing according to his word. Righteousness, amen, that's living a holy life before God here on this earth. Amen, that's determined to be a representative, amen, for Christ, realizing that we are ambassadors, amen, here on this earth. This world is not our home, amen. Heaven is our home, and one day we are going there to be with the Lord, amen. But in the meantime, we are ambassadors of heaven down here on the earth for our Savior. As ambassadors, we are to represent our home base, which is heaven. Amen. And everything in heaven is obeying the will of God. Amen. Is doing the will of God. Amen. Everything that is in heaven, now, amen, listens to the instructions of God. Amen. And so it ought to be with us that are ambassadors down here on the earth. Amen. But again, the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Amen. It's something about when you're following after righteousness that makes God feel real good. Amen. It's just like when you have a child and they're an obedient child and they go to school and they're not making any trouble. They make good grades. Amen. You're proud of that child. Well, it's the same thing with the Lord. When he sees us walking up right before him, amen, being a representative of heaven here on earth, living a God, a lifestyle that should help draw men unto him, it makes the Lord proud of his children. Amen. He's looking down upon us, and I can believe, amen, with a smile. Amen. The Bible said that he counts up his jewels, and we ought to be one of them. Amen. When he looks down and can see his reflection, amen, of himself on the earth, it makes God glad. The Bible says the way of a fool is right in his own eye. Mm -hmm, that, that's, that's our way. When our ways are right in our own eyes, then we are fools. The Bible is saying the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hardeneth, that listens unto counsel is wise. Mm -hmm. Because we have some that I don't care what you say, what you do, your hand can stand up on your head. Trying to get them to do the right thing, they are not going to do it because they are foolish. And their own ways are right in their own eyes. Your way is wrong. God's way is right. My way is wrong, God's way is right. And we have to sit down and listen to somebody instruct us through the word of God. I'm so glad that God has a record that he left here on the earth for our example. Amen. Amen. The Bible, the word of God. It is the living word. It's not a dead word, but it is a word that quickens. It is a word that makes alive. Amen. It is a word that will change your life, the way you think, the way you walk, the way you talk. Amen. The way that you act and what you do. The word of God is able to change you, but you got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say unto you. That's a wise person, but a fool will not take heed to the word of God, and it does not matter how many times you tell them. The Bible even talks about a fool that it doesn't even matter how many stripes you put upon them. They still will not pay you any attention. And you have some children that is like that. But not only do you have children, you have adults that are the same way. 
children, you can tell them over and over again, you can give them a beating. But they're going to go back and do it again. You can beat them again and they're going to do it again. Beat them again and they're going to do it again. You have some children that are just like that. They are foolish children. Then we have older adults that are the same way. It doesn't matter what God does. It doesn't matter how he chastises. They do it over and over and over again. They refuse to hearken to the word of God because they want to walk in their own way. They want to do their own thing. And sometimes even over on the Lord's side, because, amen, we are grown in the natural, amen, we feel as though we can be grown with God. But you are never grown with God. You can become mature, but we still have to be as little children. Uh, our spirits have to stay as little children. A little children can be corrected, amen, and they don't have animosity in their spirit when they are corrected. The problem comes in because we feel as though we are grown up that nobody can correct us. Amen. But God wants us corrected when we go wrong. At least we find ourselves in hell. Your way is wrong. God's way is right. All the time and not some of the time. Uh-huh. God's way is right all the time. And sometimes we're questioning whether God's way is right. That's the problem when we question whether God's way is right or not. Uh, we're measuring God's word. We're thinking about whether it's right or whether it's wrong. I don't know whether to receive that or not receive it. Do I receive it or do I not receive it? I don't want to receive it. I don't think that's right. We want to pick and choose what is right in the word of God. Something's wrong with that. Because if I can pick out and say, well, I don't think this is right in the word of God, then if one part is wrong, then why is not the whole thing wrong? But if one part is right, why is not the whole thing right? God doesn't give us the liberty to pick and choose about his word, whether this is right, and I'll take this part out, and I don't have to do that part, and I don't believe that part, and I don't want that part. No, the Bible says to eat the whole world, the complete thing. Amen. Some of it, it may be hard to chew. Hallelujah. But keep on chewing for a while. After a while, you'll be able to get it down. But we're going to have to chew it, even when it hurt our feelings. My God, when God comes forth to correct us, the Bible lets us know that the word of God is for instruction. It is for reproof. My God. It is to correct us. So it means no matter how old we get, we all can use some correcting. Because from time to time, if we're not careful, we will veer off into our own way. And God has to tell us, you're off course. Get back into my way and get out of your way. Because your way is wrong. Going to Matthews, the seventh chapter. Matthews, the seventh chapter. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. I like to talk about the straight gate. S T R A I T. Not G H T. A I T. All right. This this gate is refined. This gate is strict. This gate is not a wide gate. Therefore, everything can't get through the gate. The Bible says, "Enter ye in at the straight gate." There's restrictions that's laid upon us in order to be able to get through the gate, to get through the straight gate. 
So what are you saying? What I'm saying is if we have too much stuff, we won't be able to get through the straight gate. If we can't get through the straight gate, then we can't be on the right pathway. We won't be on the pathway to heaven. You got to get through the gate first. Enter ye in at the straight gate. The strict gate. The structured gate. The gate that won't allow any and everything to get through it. You can't carry all your baggage through this gate. It won't fit. Enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. If you want to take everything you got with you, all your ways with you, all your thinking patterns with you, all our isms and schisms, if we want to take all of that with us, then Broadway is wide open. You can take anything on Broadway. You can take your meanness on Broadway. You can take your disgruntledness on Broadway. You can take hatred on Broadway. You can take malice on Broadway, lust on Broadway. Anything you want, it goes on Broadway. Because Broadway is having your way. But he said, enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. The way. We're talking about the way. Your way is wrong. My way is wrong. God's way is right. But our way would be broad way. Our way is I do it like I want to do it. And if I don't want to do it, I don't have to do it. I do it because I like it. Doesn't matter who it hurts, including myself. But that's my way. A lot of people remember the song by Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. But where does my way take me? And where will my way get me? From doing it my way. God is telling us that your way is the wrong way. Your way is going to lead you in a pathway of destruction. Your way says that I want to keep drinking even though they said that I have cirrhosis of the liver. I want to drink because I want to get drunk. But your way is killing you. I like the feeling that I get when I get high, so I'm going to keep on shooting these drugs into my veins, but you're getting abscesses. You got abscesses in the pusses, and, and you're getting infections. But you won't stop shooting the drugs because you like the feeling, and you are addicted. And you don't even want to go a way you can get help for your addiction because you want to hold on to the drug. That's your way. And then it gets so bad sometimes that eventually they will have to start amputating parts of your body because you didn't want to get help because you didn't want to stop because you like the feeling that you get. See, that's our way. Our way will put us in harm's way. Our way will get us destroyed, all because we like it our way. The doctor can tell us that we have high blood pressure, but we'll say, well, I'm going to eat the pork and eat all the salt that I want to eat because that's what I'm used to doing, and I'm going to do me, and so I'm just going to do that, and then we have the audacity to say, I'm going to pray over this, and we expect God to overrule the rules. <laughs> you know it's true. We expect God to overrule the rules that apply to our physical health. Amen. Because we want to keep doing like we do. And we don't want to stop it because this is what we like. That's our way. 
disobedient, because the word is already written, we are to walk in the things that we know to do right. That includes our body. The Bible says that in everything we are to be temperate. We have to have temperance. That's not just spiritual things. That is natural things as well. We have to say no to some things. Now, you might be able to have it here and there, but you can't have it all the time because it will destroy your physical body. And now, we can't put it on the devil that the devil made me sick. Not if we made ourselves get sick. Am I right? Absolutely the truth. I said as God would have us to know, your way and my way is the wrong way. Our way is, I want to do this because this is what I like. This is my appetite. This is what I have an appetite for? Well, let's deal with that. I have an appetite for this salt. So I need this salt. But there are so many other things on the market that the food can still taste good without that salt, like that table salt. I don't want that. So would we rather be sick? That's our way. I don't want that, so I'm going to be sick. Then I'm going to get hands laid on me. Now, only the mercy of God, if God chooses to, he can have mercy. But he doesn't have to because he knows we have been disobedient. And we have not done as he spoke in his word, and we were not temperate. So the question on the floor is this. If God say be temperate in all things, and we're not temperate, then therefore... All disobedience is what? Sin. Well then. Because some things we're not applying like God will have us to really apply it. And that's true. We kind of feel like this don't, this don't, this don't touch that. It ain't talk about that. But he wants us to be children that have control, self-control over ourselves. Paul said that all things are expedient, but he would not be brought under any. In other words, he was saying, I'm not going to let anything control me. I am going to control me. Even though it's lawful and also expedient, I'm not going to do it, but not expedient. That's what he said. All things are lawful, but not expedient. I could do it, but it might not really be meant for me to do it. Because if I do it, it might not be good for me, nor may not, and it also may not be good for someone else. So I am going to control myself. What is it that I need to do? That's what we have to ask ourselves. What is it that I need to do? Especially with all the things that they're doing to our food these days. They're, they're, they're doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. So that's enough in itself. Yeah. Then we go and add the other stuff on top of it and make ourselves even worse. More unhealthy. That's what we do. Because of the appetite. And if we're not careful, you know, as God talks about the belly, making the belly the God. And their bellies were their God. And some people, the bellies are the God. Because you ain't going to stop till six feet you get right here. Sometimes you're just not going to stop because I don't like it. As the crochet goes, we eat to live. Not eat, not live to eat. That's just true. We eat to live. We shouldn't be living to eat. Some people can't wait to eat. I mean, all the time, just want to eat. 
Now, food is good. I mean, I love food, you know, in its right perspective. You know, it's, it's enjoyable, but my dog, I mean, some people don't get you up over some food. I'm, they, about, they about to leave their salvation and everything because they're going to get the food. They're going to fuss in the kitchen because they are going to get the food. And it's like, my Lord, have the food. Because we will eat again. I mean, really, let's think about it. We don't have to fight over food. What do we fight over food for? We don't have to fight over it. It's not that serious. Now, I don't want nobody to eat my food. Now, I will say that. I don't want nobody to eat my food. I've had that done to me on a couple of occasions. That's not a good feeling if somebody eats your food. But there ain't no reason to fight nobody over. You know.
to destruction. And many there be which go in there and most people are going on Broadway. They're already on Broadway. People like Broadway because you can do whatever you want to do on Broadway. This is kind of how I think. Let me, let me, let me, let me talk about Broadway. How many people in here have been to New York? Been to New York? Been to New York? How many have walked the streets of New York? Thank you very much. I have never, I mean, ever seen anywhere like that in my life on a street. Walking on the block. Oh, 
Now, some people have thrown some hands. Some people have threw some hands, and they probably going to say to you, they threw some hands, and God had to give you victory over your hand. <laughs> you won't go upside nobody's head. You don't want to say, you can't be doing none of that. My God. <laughs> and God knows you can't be cussing out nobody. You can't be cussing nobody out. be 
mean no harm? See, that's how I was I think. This shouldn't be nothing. This is nothing. This is no harm. Let me, let me take it a little bit further. I'm, I'm going to go beyond calling other people names. Calling yourself names. And I hear you. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. That's wrong. You didn't create yourself. What you did may have been unwise. But that doesn't make you a dumb person or a stupid person. You might have made some unwise decisions. But we can't criticize ourselves in that manner. Because just like God made the other individual, he also made you. And if he won't let you do it to them, he don't want you to do it to you. Because you're just as important to him as they are. And when you use those words, if you use those words toward another person, you can damage them. So it is when you use them against yourself. You can be damaging yourself. And actually, you are. It's helping to give yourself more low self-esteem about you. And that's not the problem. It's something how much God got in that book, isn't it? It's a lot. When he said everything pertaining to life and godliness, that's exactly what he means. It's really in the book. It's really there. All the help that we need is in his word. Be it spiritual or natural. His word will deal with it. But then we have to give we have to give the heed to the word of God. We got to give the martyrs heed to the word of God. And he said any time we let it slip. And the devil wants us to let it slip. So that the next time we're going to repeat the same thing. But if we take the word of God in and we harbor it and we put it in our heart, the next time it comes to us to call ourselves dumb, to call ourselves stupid, to belittle ourselves, then if the word of God will say that's not the thing that God wants for you. I'm going to be kind to myself. See, sometimes it's like this. I don't want you to mistreat me. I don't want you calling me, and out, calling me out my name. But we mistreat ourselves. And we call ourselves out our name. And we don't want anybody to abuse us, but we are abusing ourselves. So how do we think that looks in the eyes of God? If he will not allow someone else to abuse you, neither is he allowing you to do it to yourself. Because we are his creation. And he loves us. And it does not matter how we feel about ourselves at the moment. It's just like it doesn't matter how you feel about somebody else in that moment. You don't have the right to mistreat them, nor do you have the right to mistreat yourself. Well, it's me. I can do what I want to do with myself. That means that you're walking in your own way, and your way is wrong. That's how serious God takes it. We still belong to God. And if you're someone else's property, you don't have the right to do with their property whatever you want to do with their property. So that means that I don't have the right, you don't have the right to criticize yourself on a constant just because that's something that you have been accustomed to doing. That means you need to work with The next time, you need to say, no, I'm not going to say that about myself. I'm better than that. That's not me. That's how I feel right now. But it's not me. I'm not going to criticize myself. 
I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm not going to damage myself. I'm going to work on how I talk to myself. You ever had to work on how you talk to somebody else? Because you know you are talking to them right? Yes. And then you have to start, okay, let me inhale before I speak. Count to ten. Not out loud, though. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Try to calm yourself down before you say something to them. Because normally you would just snap at them. Mm -hmm. But we got to do the same thing with ourselves. God said, try to calm yourself down before you start talking self-talk to yourself. Calm yourself down. Try to get to a more even level before you say anything to yourself. It's just like your children. If you beat your children while you are angry, you might hurt them. It's not best to beat children when you're angry. Wait till you calm down. Now you can correct them correctly when you beat them. But if you're really angry and you start beating on a child, you can do some damage to that child because you're doing it out of anger. You got to be able to do it in love. You know, some of the older people would say, you know, I'm doing this because I love you. Which is true, though. You know, but children ain't thinking like that while you beating them. Like, I don't understand how you love me and you beating me. But I'm doing this for your own good. <laughs> Till they get older and they can understand why that was necessary. So the police wouldn't get the billy club and bust you upside your head later on. I beat your behind. Till now you know how to obey rules and regulations. You don't just do whatever you want to do and walk in your own way because your way is not the right way. Just because you feel like doing 100 on a highway does not mean you should do 100 on the highway. There are speed limits. And then, of course, you know, they let you go over to a certain amount. You know, they give you a little grace in there. But 100, not anywhere here. I don't think on no highway here, you can do 100. But there is somewhere where they can do as much as they want to do. That's scary to me. They call it the Audubon. Where is that located at? Anybody know? In Germany. Good God in heaven. You talking about some scary stuff. Don't even put me out there. Ah, 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 ah. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I mean, those people are driving crazy out there. High speeds, 200 and all that. On the Audubon. They just driving however fast they want. They fly. So you already know if there's an accident, you done. Can't nobody save you but God. At that speed and that impact, Good God have mercy. That's just too fast. But some people, they want to go like that. They just want to go how they want to go, at the speed they want to go, which will kill them eventually if God don't step in and have mercy. Because see, the devil make us overdo it or underdo it. He never wants us to do it like God wants us to do it. <laughs> That's just the truth. Overdo it or underdo it. But don't do it exactly how God wants you to do it. That's how the devil wants us to do it. But our way is not right. Our way is not right. God's way is right. All right? Be what? Because straight is the gate. 
that narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. All right, the straight gate and the narrow way that leadeth unto life. And few, the Bible say that? Wait a minute, but the broad way, it said many, but the straight gate and the narrow way, few there be that find it. That find it. How do you define something? What is it again? Come on now. You seeking after it. You're seeking after it. We got to seek for the ways of the Lord. Seek him while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. We got to seek God now like never before. And we can't have the mindset that we're going to run with the crowd. Because the crowd is running in the wrong direction, even in church. The crowd is running in the direction, how much more can I do? How much closer can I get to the edge without falling off? That's where the crowd is running. Because I want to do more of my way. And my will. So can I get more of my way in there? Can I get more of my will in there? And still be saved? And still please God? Still make it to heaven? Now you know what I, what I, when I think about the word of God, I think about how the Bible talked about some of the kings of Israel and Judah as well. Some of them were good kings. Well, the Bible said they were good kings. All right? But some of them, even though the Bible said they were good kings, it also said, basically, more or less, they did all the right things except. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those except. Amen. I don't want God. See, I don't want that down on my record. You understand what I'm saying? You did all this like I want you to do it except this. Why did they not turn out some of them, the groves, the high places, People kept going up there and worshiping and all that stuff. They didn't turn that down. But other things they did do. Some of us may feel that good is good enough. But I feel like the perfect will of God is what's good enough. Not just good. Let me fulfill everything that you want me to fulfill just like you want me to do it. Because if you empower me, that means it can be done. If you ask of me, that means it can be done through your spirit. Not that I can do it on my own because I know I cannot. But if that's what you require out of me, that's what exactly what I want to give you. I don't want to give you anything less. Now, that's me personally. You have to make your own choices and your own decisions. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? And some things he requires you that he don't require of other people. Now, all of us have to be out of sin. But there are other things that God sometimes requires out of us individually. And we can't say, well, they do it, and that's how they work with it. So what's wrong with me doing it like that and me working with it? And God is saying, that's not what I chose for you, though. That's not how I want you to operate. I'm not going to measure you according to how I'm measuring them. And what's not sin, what's not sin can become a sin for you because it's not what God wants for you to do. If God tells you not to do it, your disobedience will make you innocent. Not that the thing is sinful. It's not what God wants for you. I can't live my life off of everybody else. I gotta live my life according to what God wants. That's who I have to please. And it doesn't matter how many people come and tell you, oh, it's nothing wrong with that. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do the other? Because that's not what God has given me the liberty to do. That's not what I want to do. But it's okay if you're doing it. As long as it's not said. 
sick. That's going to be my body. So I have to take care of my body. I have to think about whether I want to do that or not. Amen. And so if I choose not to do it, I choose not to do it if 5,000 people are not doing it. Are doing it. You understand what I'm saying? Because this is my purpose. This is my purpose. And right now, I'm not comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I'm not comfortable. Especially when you're around and you're coughing and you're doing all of that. I'm like, I like to be praying in my head like Jesus and, you know, moving back and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm just being real. Turning my head some, you know, because stuff is still out here. And I know stuff's been out here before. But I'd rather not have it. I really would rather not have it. So, until I feel more comfortable, that's just what I'm going to be doing. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. And so it is with the things that God would have for you to do or not to do. Amen. That other people may be doing or not doing. Don't let anybody try to force you into their mold. Get in God's mold for your life. What's wrong with 10 minutes of prayer? I don't think you need to pray as much as you pray. You don't know how much I need to pray. I don't know how much you need to Let me tell you something. Some people need to pray more than other people. Some people need to fast more than other people. Because everybody don't have the same stuff to fight against. So where you might not need to do a whole lot of fasting, somebody else, they need to do a whole lot of fasting. Because they got more demons that they fight than you do. And your little bit of fashion is not going to help them to keep the victory. Mm. So you don't have no right over your mouth and talk to my Oh, no, you should. You don't need to fast like that. I don't fast like that. I'm not going to do my something against you. You got to baby, little baby, sweet. <laughs> I know you might not fast like that. <laughs> but I can't live my life <laughs> off of your fast. I got to do as much fast as I need to do. And I have to pray as much as I have to pray. The Bible says save yourself from this unto. I got to save myself. You know what I'm saying? And I got to do all this. All this I'm doing. And some more. So I can be saved. Because you don't know what it's taking for me. Sometimes you might have to explain to people I, I can't, you know. It's like telling somebody, you know, I eat a Like to taste it. 
could have never tasted it before. It's something that I want. Even though God said, don't eat of it. Now I'm going to get into my way. Because the devil brought it up. She done seen this tree all this time. This is not the first time she's seen the tree. Some things we'd have been seeing for a long time. But then the devil wants to get us to focus on the very thing that we've been looking at, but we had no desire for it because we wanted to be in the will of God, walking in God's way, and now all of a sudden the devil wants us to zone in on it and start talking to your mind, getting to your flesh, trying to get you into your fleshly way. This is how the devil deals with people. And this is how he dealt with Eve. She could have gotten that fruit anytime she wanted to have gotten that fruit. Yes. Nothing changed about the look of that tree. That tree been looking good. That fruit been on that tree. It didn't just get on there that day. But all of a sudden, here comes the toast. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, all right, I would like to taste it. God said, I'm not supposed to, but I would like to. And that it was pleasant to the eye. It looked good. It did look good. But now her desires are being amplified. And she's going to get into her own way. As a tree to be desired, to make one wise. Hey, I'm gonna get a whole lot out of this. I'm gonna get something that's tasting good. It looks real good. And not only that, I'm gonna get to know some stuff that I don't know. That God don't want me to know. <laughs> and I'm gonna become like God. Oh, I'm gonna be something. I'm getting ready to be something. He thinks he's something, I'm getting ready to be something. Once I eat from this tree. Yeah, she got them all, all for you. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life has gotten stirred up on the inside of her. Miss Big Girl. Getting ready to go contrary to the word of God. Get in her own way. And the devil is egging her own way. After thinking about all of that and looking at the fruit and imagining how good it's going to taste, and mouth might have started watering and all of that. And as I said before, before she was fine, she was okay, she knew that she wasn't supposed to eat it. The tree looked the same way it's always been looking, but she wasn't interested. Because she was interested in obeying. I want you to understand. She was interested in obeying. But now. The enemy puts questions in our mind. About what God said. God said if you do it you're going to surely die. The devil said you're not going to surely die. God said that that's going to happen to you. But that's not going to happen to you. Look at everybody else. You end up with the devil and stuff. Look at everybody else that has done that. They tell you it's going to happen. It ain't going to happen to you. They fine. You can do it too. You're going to be okay. But they're not okay. My God, my God. The devil tried to get us in our way. It said. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. As they say, misery loves company. See, people don't like to be wrong all by themselves. They like to get somebody else in it with them and make them feel bad. Y'all don't know that? When people do them wrong, if you do them right and they do them wrong, that's bothering them sometimes. And some people want you to join in with them so it's going to make them feel more comfortable in their sins. And your light won't be showing up there, don't 
So now, out of there from this tree, I'm getting out of here. Because I'm getting in trouble. He's getting in trouble. Man, I'm going to be the same. Because I ain't doing this all by myself. I disobey. He's going to be disobeyed. Do it. Every. Boy, you can't. <laughs> And he did it, you know, he did it. Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. Don't let nobody force you into doing something that's wrong, that's detrimental to your life and to your soul, or even to your health. Because some people, they know you're trying to work for good and being healthy. They try to push the stuff on you. Oh, I brought you a cake. I don't know why you want the cake because I'm not eating no cake. Come on now, I don't want the cake, you won't let my money go to waste. No, you won't let your money go to waste because you know I'm not eating cake. <laughs> now what I can do is I can give it to somebody else. Well, I bought it for you, well, I'm sorry, but I'm not eating cake. And sometimes that's what you have to do. I'm just selling you at a church. I don't know, I think some people like trying to break other people's will. They like money. I got them to eat that cake. I ain't gonna eat the cake. I don't want the cake. As a matter of fact, I do want the cake, but I'm gonna deny myself and I'm gonna have the cake. <laughs> I'm just using the cake, though. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever it might be, whatever it might be, that the enemy is able to entice or allure you with, that the flesh would like to have. Joshua, Joshua the sixth chapter. It's about doing it your way, which is the wrong way. Joshua the sixth chapter, verse 18 and 19. All right, so what's happening here is Israel, they're going, going into Jericho. Joshua instructs them what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do, and how everything in Jericho is a curse, and they're not supposed to take of anything that's in the city, and the things that are silver and gold, it belongs to God, and God only is supposed to go into the treasury. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Least ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel accursed. And trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Go over to chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 1, then I'll read 19 to 21. Verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accused thing, a cursed thing. For Achan, just one person. The son of Carmi, one person can do a whole lot of damage. I want y'all to know that. The son of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. God said, don't take it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Why must we be disobedient? I want it. I don't care who said don't take it, I want it. God said don't take it, I want it. I want to have my way. Isn't that what Achan wanted? He wanted his own way. Verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. Make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw, I saw, there it is again, I saw, I looked at it, I know God said don't take the stuff. I know God said don't go over there. I know God said don't call him. I know God said don't call her. I know God said it. I don't have no doubt God said it. I know God said don't do that. 
shekels of silver, a good mint, and a wage of gold of fifty shekels weight. Then I coveted them. I wanted them. Now God, is, God had already said that the gold and the silver was here. Didn't he say that? Consecrated to him. That's scary in itself. God said the gold and the silver is consecrated to me. That's my stuff. It go in my treasure. And the other stuff is a current. Don't even touch that stuff. Leave that stuff alone. And you know I gotta leave God's stuff alone because then it's gonna be a curse. And now it becomes a curse because I'm taking it to myself. He admits the truth. I coveted them. I know it wasn't mine, but I wanted it. That's how it went. It's not mine, but I wanted it. And no good, I wanted it. You open your pocketbook, and I saw that you had a hundred dollar bill, and they look good to me. When you get up, I'm gonna just slide the zipper open and you know go in there. Get it. It just brought back my mind a couple days ago. I went to Sam's Club, and this, this, this really was true to me. I went to Sam's Club, and it was one of the lines that you um, check out yourself. And so what they do, they have a cart. You know, if you have so many items, they want you to take your items out of your cart and put it into the empty cart. So, you know, I'm scanning my stuff, put it in an empty cart. And there was another line, you know, because it's an opening where the cart was, right here. So open it. And then there's, you know, people scanning their stuff on the other side. I'm scanning my stuff, I'm putting it in the cart. I'm scanning my stuff, da, 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 I'm putting it in the cart. So then I happen to turn around. And I'm like this little girl with her parents or whatever. I don't know what the parents told her to do with it, what? She's like, she's trying to ease her little hands over to me. And I say little girl, not a little girl, like a little girl. Mm -hmm. But a little girl. Mm -hmm. So I, I ease her hand over to my car. That I would scan myself and put it into the car. Mm -hmm. And now she's trying to look at conspicuous. I got the bomb. <laughs> I got the 
seemed like you must have dug a hole and put the stuff in it. Now you're going to hide it. Y'all going to have to get up and move and go somewhere. You got to dig it up. But you're not going to get a chance to because God saw you when you took it. God says, covet not. It said a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple.
She is simple. She's not very intelligent, in other words. Okay? We got a difficulty learning. And some people never learn. Ever learn enough, baby, come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. Foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, unintelligent, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, because he, he need understanding, she saith unto him, stolen waters are sweet. And bread eaten in secret is present. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Because you're going to do things your own way. And you won't allow God to give you wisdom. And you don't have the fear of God, for the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You're going about things your own way. So it's easy to get caught up in the trap when we do things our own way. But when we allow God to lead us, he'll keep us out of the trap. He thinks this is good. Hey, she look good. She want me. She called me. She waited right there for me. She called me, tell me, come on, boy, come on, boy, come on, boy. And it can be in the reverse, too. Come on over here, girl. Stolen waters are sweet. They don't belong to you. See, people sometimes, the flesh, they like the excitement about it. They like the sneaking around. And now you start 
hypocrite will perish. And that her guests are in the depths of hell. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The enemy is out for our life, naturally and spiritually. He's trying to kill us out. And if we walk in our own ways, we're going in the wrong direction. But it's a wonderful thing because God still has us here. I'll, I'll have to finish this for my next week, God be willing. Amen. God still has us here. We can hear the word of God. We can receive the word of God. And we can make changes. Well, we need to make changes to stop walking in our own ways because they're not the right way. Amen. Sometimes you need to say, purge me, Lord, as the Bible said, with pizza yeah. and make me white as snow. Sometimes you got to take yourself back to the altar and do some real repentance. Because I'm trying to tell you, it seems like these days, uh, I don't know. Where's the repentance? Where's the remorse for going contrary to the word and the will of God? I mean the real, true repentance. The real, I'm really sorry. And I really want to do the right thing. I really want to live like God wants me to live. Yes, I have the Holy Ghost, the hustle, hustle, the shunder, and all of that. But I know I'm not where I need to be. And I want to get there. Help me to get there, Lord. I want to be what you want me to be. And I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm all you want me to be. If that means that I Give that way. Feel free, Brother Barry. 